My challenge is to produce a strap-on jetpack that can do what the Harrier does. Blast its pilot, me, straight up into the air. This prototype Harrier here at the Science Museum shows what's going on. Vast quantities of air are sucked in through these ducts at the front. Then air and hot exhaust gases are blasted out through these nozzles here. They can be swivelled backwards to give forwards thrust, or pointed straight down to give pure vertical lift. A jet engine is out of the question on my budget, so I'm replacing hot air with cold water from a fire engine and getting my thrust from a few bent pipes. My jetpack backpack design has got four distinct bends in it, two here and another two here. Now, these bends are what I believe will give me my lift. So if you imagine what a bend does, it forces water to change direction. So here, it's forcing the water to go down, so by Newton's laws, the water must be forcing the bend to go up. Now, I notice this every time I try and fill the kettle in the workshop. This bend here forces the water to go down, and it tends to want to force the pipe to go up. Watch this. Oh! <laughs> I, uh, I think that proves the point. I reckon I'll need to be able to lift 100 kilos with my jetpack, and to achieve that, the water pressure in the pipes will have to be five times atmospheric pressure. That's 72 psi, or five bar in modern money. Sounds simple, but it could kill me if things go wrong. And they could. When the Harrier was first tested, it nearly killed its pilot, Bill Bedford. And now, it's the turn of my first prototype the Stansfield water jet, Mark I. There's a whole host of stuff that could go wrong that I probably don't know about. But the main worries are being struck directly by the jets and being driven straight into the ground. That would be bad. That would be really bad. It's got a bit of water now. Here it comes. A you do feel a tiny bit of weight coming off you. Unlike the Harrier, which balanced on four jets, the Stansfield has only two, which slightly complicates things on the control front. Oh, Whoa! Stop! <laughs> oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. No, that, that did actually hurt a little bit. Just like with the Harrier, vertical takeoff is more challenging than it looks. <laughs> to celebrate the Harrier's 40th anniversary, I'm pushing the limits of engineering to create my own vertical takeoff jetpack for the price of an average bicycle. But the Stansfield Mark I was not a great success. Oh! Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that actually properly hurts. What I learned from this little bump was that I'd need to sort out both the control system and the thrust. It took me and my mates a fair few hours in the workshop, but I think we may have done it. So here it is, Mark II. Now, the best thing about Mark II is it only weighs half as much as Mark I. The other nifty little feature is this seat here. That means I get lifted right up the centre of gravity. We've also fitted a quick-release racing harness, because I discovered in test one that hitting the ground really hurts. But this time, I'm going to be flying it over water, which is good because it makes for a softer landing, but bad because it runs that slight risk of drowning. <laughs> The other advantage is that I'll have an unlimited supply of water, which is critical, as the new fire truck I'm using has the capacity to double the flow rate coming through the pipes to around a thousand gallons a minute. Here we go, the moment of truth. Does the science stack up? Is the engineering adequate? I hope so. Problem I've got is I've got limited control. I can go right and left, I can go forwards and backwards, but up and down is not up to me. It's up to these guys. The higher they wind up the pressure, hopefully the higher I go. Here we go. Okay. 
Good. The key to blasting me upwards is not the pressure of water when it leaves the fire truck, but the pressure of the water as it whizzes around the bends in the pipes on my back. To get airborne, I need to maintain at least five times atmospheric pressure in my backpack. But as the jets fire up, something is not quite right. reassuringly stable. It almost felt like I'd be prepared to take that back over land if it didn't mean chewing up this guy's field. It's just, it's still just fractionally short on lift. Even with the engine giving me full whack at one end of the hose, the forces hitting my backpack at the other end only just lifted me from the water. We can't lift the pressure at the engine any higher or change the jetpack. But there is one thing we can try, sending the fireman back for a shorter length of hose. That should reduce pressure loss caused by friction as the water rushes along the pipe and with luck, give me my magic five atmospheres of sustained pressure. But will it? This is the one, let's go. Good. Things I've ever done. 